Hi everyone, welcome back to Code Lab. In today's video, we are going to learn about building a simple login app using Jetpack Compose. And if you are curious how navigation works in Compose, one login screen to another screen, this video is just for you. So let's begin. We will launch the Android Studio. Open the new project. So click on the new project and select the empty activity with the Compose symbol on it. And then here I have to give a name to my project. So I will call it login app. Another thing, so I will keep it same and just click OK. See, after some time, your your main activity dot Kotlin is in front of you. So as you can see, there are lots of functions. So what we do, we will delete everything. So delete inside the set content everything, and all the composable functions we're gonna create it later anyway. And we'll just optimize the imports. You can see we have not deleted the enable edge to edge. It removes the top bar. Now inside the set content, what we're gonna do is we are going to create a navigation controller. So val navigation controller. Now with navigation controller, think of it as a pilot which will take you from one place to another. So it will take our app from one UI screen to another UI screen. And that navigation controller is created by writing navigation controller equal to remember nav controller. Now this is error because we need to bring some dependencies. So alt enter, you know, you can see it is calling for dependency. Bring the right dependency on it. Sync the function again. Import the correct libraries. And after some time, you will see that the remember navigation controller is screen no error. And you can also check inside the build gradle that correct dependency has come. You can see it implementation navigation dot compose. This is the dependency which we need for navigation. Our controller is ready. You can choose any name for navigation controller. Now after the navigation controller, what a pilot need is a plan from where to where to go place to which place. Navigation host is like a plan. So create navigation host and pass the navigation controller to that navigation controller equal to navigation controller what we created. And the start destination, the start node for the controller is going to be let's declare a string equal to under the quotes login that's gonna be a string which is like a name for our node composable function at which the app initiates now inside the navigation host what a navigation controller need a graph of the places to move so for that purpose what we do we write composable under the quote into the brackets we will write login so that's our first composable tag login and inside the curly bracket, we write login screen. That's our composable function. And navigation controller is an argument to the function because in that function, we are going to use navigation controller. After that, create another composable and the root attached to that is string dashboard inside the bracket. And after that, inside the curly bracket, we're going to write dashboard screen with an argument of navigation controller. Remember, when the app starts, the navigation controller is at the start destination with the login string attached. So the app will open in the login screen UI. Now let's create those composable functions outside the main activity. So write add composable. Below that, write fun login screen. Inside the bracket, write nav controller colon nav controller. There we call our nav controller. We create it. Close the curly bracket here. And also we will create another composable composable function dashboard screen the argument navigation controller is going to be same for now we can use the navigation controller to come back to the start destination if you want to preview this composable now if you add preview you can see it doesn't work there is an error because preview should not accept any argument here the composable needs an argument how can we do that so we create another composable so below that write add preview add composable function login screen preview brackets inside the curly bracket what we're going to do now you can see the login screen preview does not have any input so it can be a preview function it can be annotated with preview now we're going to create a second preview for second composable function because these we can see only one composable at a time because of our navigation strategy so second function is dashboard screen preview curly bracket close it here now inside the login screen preview, we are going to call our composable login screen, which needs input. So first we will create another a navigation controller. We will call it mock uh, nav controller because it's not actually a navigation controller. We are only creating for the sake of preview function. So write mock nav controller equal to remember nav controller. So same properties to this controller and then call the login screen mock nav controller so it's just a controller only for the preview purpose 
same thing we will do for the second composable value mock nav controller and we will pass that controller to the login dashboard screen now our previews are ready you can see on the right you have login screen preview and dashboard screen preview so there is nothing written inside so you cannot see anything but we have two screens to preview here now let's create some ui element inside the login screen so first what we're going to do we are going to create a variable username and that username is going to change all the time so we will delegate the function right by remember so remember function you know it stores the value and assign that to username inside the brackets write mutable state of the initial value of the mutable state is going to be an empty string now copy this again and create another variable variable password that's also is going to be a variable which will be assigned different names all the time now after declaring the variables we are going to create a column column bracket now we can lay out the column so write modifier equal to modifier dot fill max size so it's gonna be the whole screen dot padding 16 dot dp import the function then we will write vertical arrangement equal to arrangement dot center comma horizontal alignment equal to alignment dot center horizontally so that everything is arranged nicely at the center now inside the column let's start creating each ui element so write text first we will write a text text equal to enter enter login credentials comma font size equal to 30 sp so this is going to be like our heading so that's why it is slightly big for the sp function the color of the text is going to be color equal to color dot blue so after the rendering you can see in the preview your text field is appearing so your preview function is properly working the way we have done here uh, because we also need another text field in the dashboard screens we'll copy and paste inside the dashboard screen and we will change the text the text will be inside the dashboard screen is welcome to dashboard and uh, on the right if you, if you scroll down you can see the second preview screen welcome to dashboard is appearing so very nice it is both the screen you can you can just see each screen is a full size screen so that's why it's, it's occupying full screen now in the in the first login screen we're going to create some vertical space so write spacer into the bracket modifier equal to modifier dot height 26 dp that's going to be the space between the text and the text fields below that write text field inside the bracket we will write value equal to so the value of the text field is going to be username variable which we have defined comma on value change so if there is a value change on the text field we write username equal to it that means whatever is written on it will be assigned to username comma label equal to inside the bracket text equal to string under the quotes username so you can see on the right that you have a text field with the label username on it then comma when we write modifier equal to modifier dot fill max width so that the field is full width now this whole spacer and text field we are gonna paste again so that we have our next text field element also for the password entry so value is equal to password and on value change it should be on the password so password is equal to it label should be password we also change slightly our text field to outline text field it looks better to me now what we're going to do we will copy this spacer paste below the text field and create the button inside the brackets write on click equal to curly bracket then there are going to be a checks condition check so if username is equal to under the quotes admin that's a string which i will check against selected username and password equal to let's say string password so if both the conditions are true then then what we do we navigate so how do we do that we write we call our nav controller now so nav controller dot navigate to a new place ui screen that's our dashboard and you can see the button is created then put a comma and modifier equal to we're going to lay out it so modifier dot fill max width we can add some padding inside the button padding 10 dot dp and after the button inside the inside the curly brackets we are going to write text inside the bracket text equal to under the quotes login that's the name of our button which will appear font size equal to 20.sp so you can see our login screen is ready
inside the dashboard screen also you will create a button so after the vertical space we will create a button here again button inside the bracket we will write on click equal to again we will call our navigation controller so navigation controller dot navigate under the brackets write quote login that's our starting node wrap it inside the curly bracket so now it's correct and the text on the button is text text equal to string we can say back so this button is going to serve as a back button you can see the back button on the, on the right side is on the top so we need to align it now inside the button we'll write after on click we will write comma modifier equal to modifier dot fill max width so the button here again is similar to the button we created in the login function and also padding same padding padding 10.dp also we what we did is our text size of the button is also bigger slightly bigger so we'll do it the same here font size equal to 20.sp so our both the screens are almost ready and now let's run the project i have mirrored my phone screen to see and how it works so you can see everything appears fine let's write let's write correct username admin and password write password and click on the login button and you can see you are on the second ui screen welcome to dashboard back button is there and when you press the back button you come back to the main screen and if you enter something else which is not already which is not matching with our user whatever password if you click on the login function nothing happens but there's a problem we haven't give any check or any message that if it is empty or if it is wrong so for that what we're going to do we're going to add some extra text which is going to be updated by the error message so variable show error by remember function again variable state of false and again a second variable show empty error so i'm creating two variables show error to boolean and as soon as you write false inside the bracket it knows that the type of the variable is boolean so two variable here show error and show empty error show error is for the errors when there is a wrong username or password empty is when the fields are empty when do we do that inside the on click we call show error equal to false first we ensure as soon as we click the button the show error function is set to the false and also the show empty error is set to false now we add another check inside the on click method inside the on click if username dot is empty or password dot is empty so if both are empty we're gonna make show empty error equal to true so what we're doing when the fields are empty we we are changing the state of this boolean and we will use that state later in the program to show some text that's the convenient way of doing this so now in the second if we instead of if we make it else if then we create another else show error equal to true so that's our three checks now are performed now we have the states of the errors and based on those booleans we can show the text show the proper error text so below the button create a check again if show error equal to false and show empty error is also false then text text equal to empty string see if you if you don't write this what happens is the whole ui will shift in the runtime so that's why i'm creating allocating a empty space for it even if there is no error else if if show error is true text for so the text field is going to be text under the quotes invalid credentials and then we write else if show empty error equal to true inside the curly bracket we write text text equal to fields cannot be empty that's when there is no username and password has been assigned now just a sizing a bit so font size equal to first text font size equal to 20 sp even though it's empty string we're gonna lay out the same because it should occupy the same space put a comma so font size equal to 20 sp color equal to color dot red copy this whole thing and also paste inside the second text so that all the error message is shown in red and now our app has been updated with the checks performed let's run it and you can see again open my phone screen and these are the empty string if you click on it you can see the text nicely appearing fields cannot be empty and now if you add a wrong username your user password one two three and you click on the login you can see the message changed to 
invalid credentials. And if you write proper username, our stored inside username, admin and password, when you click, you reach to welcome to dashboard page. And you can see the transition is smooth. But here's a problem. You can see the password is not hidden. You, whatever you're typing is visible. So there is a little tweak we should do in the text field of password. So right here in the password outline text field, we will create another property after comma, after modifier, visual transformation, which will transform the visuals as per the password should be. So equal to password visual transformation. That's it. And as soon as you do this, the password is going to be hidden when you type. Now again, you run the app and you can see, right, the username admin. And when you write the password, it is hidden. The main screen, back to the login screen. And that's it, guys. So here is your login app built. And here you learned about how to navigate from UI element. And we used that to build a simple login app. So that's it guys. If you like this video, please subscribe. And if you have comments, please reach out to me. So I'm happy to answer your comments. Thank you for watching.